Oi, hashtag Zach here. Today I'm going to tell you all about the vehicles and weapons used by the United States Army. Before we get into specifics, it's important to realize that the United States Army divides their armed forces into three main types of combat brigades. Armor, Striker, and Infantry. This is the seal of the United States Armor Corps. It has the vehicles that are the strongest and most powerful vehicles for close-in fighting. This is an M1A2 Abrams, probably the most famous kind of vehicle the U.S. Army has, a tank. These tanks are extremely powerful. Not only do they have a massive cannon that can shoot either armor piercing or high explosive rounds, but it also has a full loadout of multiple machine guns. These things can take on almost any target. However, they're not without their weaknesses, as they're such a valuable target to destroy that enemies will concentrate a lot of their fire onto just our tanks, making them really vulnerable in a lot of situations, which is why we have other vehicles to complement them. This is the M2A2 Bradley. It was designed for the unique and specific role of an infantry fighting vehicle. Infantry fighting vehicles are kind of like a Swiss army knife for armor brigades. They carry some infantry so that you can have that support on the ground, the boots on the ground to help fight and clear away obstacles, but you also have a light cannon to take out stationary targets. You have anti-tank missiles to take out vehicles that are too powerful for your gun to penetrate their armor, and you also have a lot of capability for hauling supplies. Now, there's going to be a lot of supplies that these vehicles can't carry on their own. Extra ammo, spare parts. That's why the Heavy Expanded Mobility Tactical Truck, or HEMTT, can really help. Now, what do we do when there's terrain that's not very good for these large, cumbersome vehicles? Or urban environments where their heavy weapons would cause a lot of collateral damage? That's where the U.S. Army employs Infantry Corps. Infantry Corps operate just like they sound. It's a group of soldiers that fight from foot and have vehicles to travel just from place to place. One such vehicle is the Humvee. This is a heavily armored tactical vehicle that can transport infantry and carry some heavy weapons on top. The Humvee is basically designed as an up-armored civilian vehicle, which makes it ideal for Infantry Corps. However, it's not very good on rough terrain and has a tendency to flip over. This is where we get to the JLTV, or the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle. Its weapons loadout is comparable to the Humvee, but it is much better on rough terrain. It accomplishes this by sacrificing some armor protection, so commanders on the field have to make decisions daily over whether the Humvee or the JLTV is better for the circumstances they're facing. Just like deployments of armor, deployments of infantry have a lot of supplies that they need to take, and don't necessarily have room for on their combat vehicles. This is where the FMTVs, or Family of Medium Tactical Vehicles, come in. FMTVs are extraordinarily useful because of how customizable they are. You can have all different types of beds and trailers attached to the back, making them very versatile for whatever the infantry division needs. Now, what would the army do if there were circumstances where they wouldn't know whether to send an armor or an infantry brigade? Or what if the armor brigades or infantry brigades needed extra support? This is where striker brigades come in. Strikers are another class of vehicles that are highly customizable. There's versions for all different tasks and purposes. This is the striker dragoon version. It can not only carry an entire squad of U.S. Army infantry, but it also has a light cannon on top, comparable to the Bradley. This is the SHORAD Striker. SHORAD is an acronym for Short Range Air Defense. It has missiles that can not only take out low-flying helicopters and planes, and even some fast jets, but also can be used against tanks. It has a cannon as well, for close range defense. These only begin the list of the many Striker variants out there. There's one that carries a heavy mortar for artillery. There's one that carries a tank cannon. There's one for engineering support. There's one for medical support. There's all different models for all different purposes, making striker brigades 
very versatile and able to face almost any situation. In addition to the hardware already described, deployments of the United States Army personnel are accompanied with artillery, heavy weapons that support them from long distances, firing massive amounts of firepower onto stationary targets. There are many different kinds of support artillery could provide. It could shoot concussion rounds, which cause massive blasts that can wreck bunkers and other buildings. It can shoot high explosive rounds, which can tear through large swaths of enemy infantry. Or it can fire bomblets, which, which can take out lots of smaller targets, such as parked vehicles or defense installations. The M777 155mm howitzer is the standard issue U.S. artillery piece. It has to be transported by a truck, it's pulled like a trailer, and it only takes minutes to set up and can fire multiple rounds per minute at targets miles away. The M109 Paladin is a tracked vehicle designed to take an M777 and bring it with tanks to support them when they're advancing. The M119 105mm howitzer is a much smaller version of the M777. It can be transported by smaller vehicles, and it can also be airdropped by a parachute. While howitzers are the main type of artillery used by the United States military, there is one other notable type that we use in the field regularly, rocket artillery. The M270 MLRS multiple launch rocket system is a heavily armored and tracked mount used to carry heavy rockets, which can each be fired with their own GPS coordinates from the large launch module. The M142 HIMARS, or High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, is a much lighter version of the M270, carrying half as many rockets, but it can go at much higher speeds and launch much swifter. And there you have it, a brief summary of the main vehicles used by the United States Army. Please comment, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.